coming up on Network Africa. African Union suspends Gabon following military takeover. Burkina Faso leader discusses military links with Russian delegation. Plus, tight security outside French embassy in Niger as Nigeria's president, Bola Tinubu, pushes for nine-month transition. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Lisa Walker in Lagos. Let's begin with news of Gabon. We can tell you that the African Union has suspended Gabon's participation in all of its activities following Wednesday's military takeover. The decision followed a meeting on Thursday of the bloc's Peace and Security Council after it had strongly condemned the coup. Earlier, the Gabonese junta said it would phase in what it has termed transitional institutions after the removal of President. Ali Bongo. The soldiers gave no details on how long these would remain in place, nor how or whether power might be handed back to a civilian government. The main opposition alliance says the people of Gabon should be grateful they have dethroned the Bongo dynasty, but called on the military to act responsibly. Meanwhile, military officers have confiscated numerous suitcases and duffel bags of cash from various Gabonese officials' homes. Military leaders arrested several of Bongo's cabinet members early on Wednesday on accusations ranging from embezzlement to narcotics trafficking. Among those arrested, uh, Ali Bongo's son, Noreddin Bongo Valentine, and former cabinet director, Ian Gislaine Ungulu, both of whom were present in footage of a raid on Ngulu's home broadcast by Gabon 24 on Thursday. Neither representatives of Valentine nor Ngulu could be reached for comment. In the meantime, residents of Gabon's capital, Libreville, have praised officers who ousted President Ali Bongo and installed a general as the head of state while the country's opposition says it wants to work with the junta to find the best way forward for the country. The takeover ends the Bongo family dynasty's almost six decades in power and creates a new conundrum for a region hit with a wave of coups that Nigerian President Bola Tinumbu has called a contagion of autocracy. Nous ne pouvons demander aux Gabonais. The African Union's Peace and Security Council met on Thursday to discuss the coup. Meanwhile, markets and trade have come to a halt at a Cameroonian town that borders Gabon a day after the military officers ousted President Bongo in what's now the eighth coup in West and Central Africa since 2020. In a statement on Thursday, the Junta said it had resumed domestic flights and restored some state's institutions, but land and air borders remain shot. Residents in the border town of Amban fear the prolonged closures of borders could harm local markets, where Gabonese citizens make up a sizable portion of customers. It's not really different for truck and taxi drivers as well, whose vehicles have been stranded at Cameroon's border with Gabon after the military leaders closed the borders indefinitely. With their livelihoods threatened, drivers are complaining of being left without clean water or any idea of when the border might reopen. Joining the long list of governments that have condemned Gabon's coup, the Central Africa's political bloc, the Economic Community of Central African States, condemned the coup in a statement, saying it is planning an imminent meeting of heads of state to determine how to respond. However, it did not give a date for this. <laughs> We're now being joined by senior correspondent Mariama Diallo, a journalist who's joined us from Gabon. Uh, thanks, Mariama, for joining us. People had taken to the streets in celebration and some are still pleased, but now we're seeing trucks grounded, trade is slow. Is the general population still optimistic? Give us a sense of what it's like now. Well, I 
think, uh, like we've seen uh, in Niger, uh, the initial uh, reaction uh, is always uh, just jubilation. I think for Niger, it was uh, obviously uh, the pro coup leaders uh, were jubilant, uh, and then the pro uh, Bazoum, Mohamed Bazoum, also demonstrated uh, kind of asking uh, for him to be reinstated. In the case of Gabon, what we've seen has been celebration, uh, obviously. Uh, the country has been under uh, the same, uh, basically, uh, political dynasty, the Bongo dynasty, uh, for nearly 60 years. So uh, they came out and celebrated uh, that, uh, you know, in, in, in support of the junta. Uh, but I think, uh, like any of the other uh, coups that we've seen recently, since we've had a wave of them, uh, the initial uh, reaction is has been mostly jubilation until, uh, you know, the reality sets in. Uh, in the case of uh, Niger, for example, Mali, those have seen, uh, for example, sanctions when you, you know, and, and in all the coups, you always see that the borders um, are closed, whether it's ground or, uh, uh, you know, air traffic is stopped as well, uh, which is uh, usually, um, what you may call it, uh, you know, all the junta uh, 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 leaders uh, do that initially. I think in Gabon, uh, that's what they've done as well. They, has, uh, they haven't seen sanctions yet, but the fact that the borders are closed, uh, you know, obviously has an impact on the economy, uh, although it's also very uh, early. I mean, the, the, the coup has only, has only happened uh, in the last few days. Uh, hopefully, maybe, uh, you know, things will change, things will, uh, borders will be open, but at this point, uh, we know that uh, we have condemnations from, uh, you know, organizations like the African Union and the rest of the international community. Uh, but you have the Central uh, African Economic uh, Bloc, which is supposed to meet. Uh, they condemned the coup and they're talking about a uh, meeting uh, very, very soon uh, to determine what their sanctions are going to be. What what their, uh, I shouldn't say sanctions, what their um what they're going to do moving forward. Because on the West Africa uh, side, what we've seen is that the ECOWAS had slapped sanctions, which for a country like Niger has been very, very, uh, you know, very hard. It's a landlocked country uh, and there's nowhere to go. So those sanctions have been heavily criticized. Uh, but uh, for the Central African Republic, uh, for the Central African uh, Regional Economic Bloc, I guess we're going to uh, uh, have to wait and see what they decide. Are they going to go for sanctions? Are they going to go for a possible military intervention? Um, you know, who knows? I think it's a two uh, different uh, economic blocks, and they might uh, kind of uh, go uh, handle the, the Gabonese uh, coup differently, which also it is different, um, certainly. Uh, but I guess we'll have uh, to wait and see what they do, what the African Union does, and other uh, maybe regional blocks around. Indeed. Uh, and Mariama is joining us from Nairobi, Kenya. Um, just wanted to point that correction out. Um, but when we look yes, at indeed. the military... I was going to mention that, actually. I wish no I worries. was in Gabon. But the problem with these coups, I have to say, is that uh, once they close the air and they close uh, the, the borders, Line it's border. very, very hard for journalists to get in. So we are working on maybe trying to find a way uh, to get into uh, that country as well. And with the job comes some of those hazards as well. I understand, Mariama. But then, you know, it also seems like the military government is being cagey with, you know, the next steps, transition, uh, phasing out, the ultimate plans. We're hearing the opposition say people should be happy. I think the opposition is saying people uh, should be happy because for them it's been uh, nearly 60 years of the same, uh, uh, you know, political dynasty, which are, uh, you know, which was Omar Bongo and now um, uh, his son uh, Ali Bongo, who, uh, if the elections that just uh, concluded, uh, if, if, if those elections were, uh, you know, basically his win uh, would have given him a third uh, term. So I think the opposition uh, is probably happy that that's, uh, you know, the hunter has put a stop to it. But I think one of the main opposition also came out and is encouraging the international community uh, to, to encourage the junta uh, to return, uh, uh, you know, uh, the country uh, to civilian rule. Uh, you know, because of the, the, uh, the recent wave of, of coups, 
whether it's in Mali when we've seen two, whether it's in Burkina, we've seen two, whether it's in Guinea where we've seen one, uh, whether it's been in Chad. Uh, so, and now in Niger, uh, what you have is that you usually the, the, the military hunter in some of the countries will come up with a transitional period. Uh, and in some cases, for example, in Chad, it didn't happen. There was an 18 months uh, transition period, which was supposed to expire and uh, bring back elections, but that didn't happen. So I think for Gabon, it's very early. Um, the junta hasn't decided, but I think the fear for the opposition, they might be happy that uh, you know, uh, uh, you know the long-running, uh, basically the one political party that's been uh, running uh, is gone. Uh, but the next thing that they are thinking about is, you know, wh what comes next? Is there going to be a transitional period? Uh, because their goal, they certainly uh, want the country uh, to be uh, returned to civilian rule. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, at least according to one of the opposition leader. Uh, today uh, who talked about that and who talked about maybe going through the elections and and kind of looking at uh, who really won the elections. So if that's the case and they decide that one of the opposition leader won, they might not need a transitional uh, period. Uh, but I think it's very early at this point uh, to know what's going to happen. But uh, all options um, are there and should be there, I think, uh, at least for the opposition. And perhaps on a final note, Mariama, the AU has taken a hard stance. Um, do you think it can wield any major influence with the junta? And this is when we look at history, um, how the AU has acted in the past. Well, I think um, it, it's it's very hard. Uh, it's a it's it's a very good question, and everybody is uh, probably thinking about you know what these international organization what weight uh, do they have in fact the piece i filed today uh talked a little bit about that it's like you have these big international organizations and looking at history the most recent history at least uh you know when we talk about ECOWAS, which has been dealing with the west africa uh, uh, the, the, the coups that have been happening in West Africa. Uh, so whether it's Guinea, uh, whether again, whether it was Mali or Burkina Faso, uh, I think what we've seen, a lot of them have been kind of sanctions and, and, you know, and in the case of Niger, which has been the most recent one, uh, you know, there was threats of, of a military intervention, but the deadline was one week. It was like, we're giving you, we're giving the junta a deadline of one week to return the country into civilian role. But that didn't happen. So I think what analysts have been talking about, at least this week, last week, and the most recent thing, uh, the most uh, recent times, is that these international organizations, and it's not just ECOWAS, it's not, not just the African Union, you have the European Union, you have the United Nations, uh, you know, some analysts are wondering, all you hear is condemnation, strong words, but there is no action. And I think that in this case for Gabon, uh, you know, I think the, the difference between Gabon and Niger is that in Niger, at least, the junta toppled a democratically elected president. So he was elected in 2021. But in the case of Gabon, uh, the elections just ended and a lot of the international organizations also uh, kind of did not really agree. And they, they say that there were a lot of irregularities. So I think, it, it, I don't know how they're going to handle the, the different coups, but at least it's good to note that in the past few years, the, the latest coups, it's been a lot of condemnations. It's been a lot of words, but no action. So and it remains to be seen uh, what would happen in this case uh, with, with the latest condemnations. Indeed, Mariama, and you know that is the question: whether it's you know something happening on the African continent or you know happening in Europe or elsewhere around the world, as to the role of these international um, organisations. We'd like to thank you, uh, senior VOA correspondent Mariama Diallo, joining us from Nairobi, Kenya. Thank you for having me. Still to come. Moroccans angry after jet ski tourists shot dead off the coast of Algeria. We'll bring the details. Welcome back. 
A Russian delegation has had held talks with Burkina Faso's interim president Ibrahim Traoré at a meeting that included discussions on possible military cooperation. The visit, led by Russian Deputy Defence Minister Yunus Bek Yevkorov, was a follow-up to talks between Traoré and Russian President Vladimir Putin at the Russia-Africa summit in St. Petersburg in July. Burkina Faso's relations with Moscow have been on the spotlight since it kicked out French troops in February, fueling speculations it would deepen security ties with Russia, like its neighbor Mali. At the end of the meeting, uh, Yakurov indicated that training for Burkina Bay cadets, officers, pilots in Russia were all on the table. The Russian government is also offering economic and nuclear energy assistance. Nigeria's President Bola Tinubu has suggested a nine-month transitional period for the Niger junta to return the country to civilian rule. He was speaking while hosting Islamic leaders who have been on two tours to Niger for talks with the junta. President Tinubu said Niger could emulate the example of former Nigerian military ruler General Abdul Salami Abubakar, who returned the country to democratic rule in 1999 after a nine-month stint as a junta leader. The president, who is also the current chairman of the West African bloc ECOWAS, added that the Nigerian example had proved very successful, leading the country into a new era of democratic governance. The Niger junta had announced a three-year transition period, which has been rejected by ECOWAS. President Tinubu warned that ECOWAS would not lift sanctions imposed on Niger until the junta makes positive adjustments. Meanwhile, Niger's ruling junta has ordered police to expel France's ambassador, a move marking a further downturn in relations and one that authorities in Paris say the coup plotters have no authority to make. The coup's leaders are following the strategy of junta's in neighboring Mali and Burkina Faso in distancing themselves from the region's former colonial power amid a wave of anti-French sentiment. The visas of French ambassador to Niamey and his family have been cancelled and police have been instructed to expel the envoy. Security forces waited outside the embassy, searching vehicles leaving the premises. Instigators of the coup condemned by regional African authorities and by Western nations last Friday ordered the French ambassador to leave the country within 48 hours in response to what they called actions by France contrary to the interests of Niger. And we're in South Africa, where the president, Cyril Ramaphosa, has called the more than 70 deaths in an apartment block fire in Johannesburg a tragedy. Johannesburg officials initially suggested the building had been occupied by squatters. But Mr. Ramaphosa believes criminal elements exploiting vulnerable families, such as in the building that got burned, are involved. Household fires are common in Johannesburg, especially in poor areas. One of the poorest townships, Alexandra, has seen hundreds of homes raised in several fires over the past five years. This is very sad and the rest is to investigate. I was talking to the Premier earlier and uh, we are going through and they are going through the process of setting up an investigation process which Kenya and the city will announce in due course. Yeah, but the lesson for us is that we've got to address this problem and boot and everything else, boot out those criminal elements because it is these types of buildings that are taken over by criminals who then levy rents on our and a survivor of the fire which killed more than 70 people in Johannesburg is mourning his 21-year-old sister whom he lost in the blaze. Omar Arafat weeps as he holds onto a picture of the woman and says another sister is in the hospital. The 27-year-old migrant worker from Malawi said he managed to throw his sister's young daughter out the building and she was caught by people on the street below, apparently suffering a broken arm in the process. He then jumped out of the burning building but lay unconscious in the street for some time. 
when I'm get up, then I saw the fire, all the building. And when I look, I, I, I look at down, then I saw the fire. And that the fire, they start the place where we go in, we go outside, because it's the only one place to go out. And I'm broke the window and just also to try to protect myself. And when I'm fell down, then the people they just explain me that I'm take three hours to come to what to get up because I was worried like I'm dead. And I just try to bring the baby. When I'm past the window, just throw the baby. Then someone there catch outside because at that time, ne, it was also my head was like I'm crazy because at that time, ne, it was like you know sometimes when the accidents come, no one can, no one comes, no one knows come comes ne? but I was trying to be strong like a man but I'm trying my best yeah until now I'm still alive I don't have a place to say and all things is spent inside food whatever the cloth you know but I just say that because I'm still alive thanks God but uh, about my things TVs whatever is spent everything everything is spent documents? documents my passport even my ID Everything. We move away from South Africa to residents in Morocco who are angry over Algerian Coast Guard shot dead two tourists holidaying in Morocco who reportedly strayed into Algerian waters on their jet skis. They were among four French Moroccan dual nationals who had set off from the Moroccan resort of Sadia. A third member of the group was arrested by the Coast Guard, which patrolled the two states' closed uh, border. The two nations have a long history of tension tied to Morocco's claims to the disputed Western Sahara. The border between them was closed in 1994 with Algiers severing ties. Uh, two years ago, it accused Morocco of hostile acts, an allegation rejected by Rabat. Moroccans are demanding the Coast Guards be prosecuted. And culture means different things to different people and shouldn't be wiped away from history. This is why Ethiopian traditional dancer Malaku uh, Bele hopes to preserve the country's last cultural hump known as Fendika and save it from demolition. <laughs> This is Vedika, the last cultural hub of its kind in Ethiopia's capital, and it's just escaped demolition. The club was taken over more than a decade ago by dancer and choreographer Malaku Bele. His dream was to revive Ethiopian performance and visual arts in the heart of Addis Ababa. This is a place where people enjoy art just like a concert. It is a house that is making a huge contribution to Ethiopia by preserving the culture. It has made an impact as well as by shedding a light on Ethiopian culture for the tourists. But in June this year, the city authority in Addis said it planned to tear Fendika down to make way for a luxury hotel. It looked like the days were numbered for an institution frequented by locals and tourists alike, including Japanese expert Hiroko Samejima. Actually, I love Ethiopian music and dance and other traditional things. But among all those traditional things, Handika's atmosphere is the best for me. Ballet and other supporters of Ethiopian dance and music got to work, campaigning to stop the demolition. Weeks later, after pressure from artists, journalists and locals, Bele said the capital's mayor told him Fendika would not be touched. 20 years ago, Fendika was one of 17 such clubs in the capital. But the rest have since been lost, often to the city's development aspirations, which have not spared many historic buildings. And though Fendika has been saved this time, Malay has been told that he will be required to develop the land. And by the way, Fendika is Amharic for exalt. Hoping you have a great weekend. Thanks for watching Network Africa and Millicent Walker.